Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs. So today we are going to cover one very interesting thing. What are the new features available from 8 to JDK 15? It's a long pending topic from my side. If you haven't seen this particular series guys from my channel JDK 8, all the features available in JDK 8, I have listed everything, stream, functional programming, lambda expressions, filter APIs, everything. Please go and watch it over there. Then uh, there are a lot of things added in JDK 9, for example, like optional uh, class that I added, JShell got added in JDK 9, then factory method for immutable collections classes that we have added in JDK 9, then in J uh, JDK 10 they have uh, introduced the variable concept, the type interface variable concept, no need to define any variable type, you can simply write VAR keyword, you can write it, then uh, you can write switch expressions, multi-line strings also they have added. Then they have added uh, uh, data classes like records and everything they have introduced. Then uh, instance of uh, without casting also you can do that. Then they have introduced the sealed classes also available in JDK 15. So a lot of things added. Still people are working on JDK 8 only and JDK 1.7. I think it's very high time you should know about all these important features. So I've collected all the important features from different JDK versions. That's what I'm doing it. So if you go to my terminal, I can check quickly that which version I'm using for Java. I'm using guys JDK 15 over here. Perfect. So uh, in my Eclipse up to JDK 14, I can use it. Otherwise, I have to install uh, JDK 15 plugin in my Eclipse. So till JDK 14, we will see a couple of features over here. And uh, we will sh I'll show you JShell also available over here. You can write directly code from the command prompt in Java now. They started in JDK 1.9. So if you are already having JDK 15 or 14, that's good that okay, you can use all the old JDK features as well. So what I'm going to do that in my Eclipse, I'm going to create a new uh, Java project and uh, I'm going to select my JRE version from 14 from here. And then the project name, let's see, I'm going to select. I'm going to create a new project name over here. Let's see Java, a new uh, features and you simply click on next and click on finish don't create the module java new features got added you can see under src folder i'm going to create a new package now and let's see my package name is java features under this particular package i'm going to create let's see first class over here and a quick recap on streams that is introduced in the form of functional programming from jdk 8 a very nice feature which is available in jdk now and uh, i simply create the class name is the streams Select the main method and click on finish. So in a streams, what does it mean? A stream can be applied on your list objects. It can be applied on map object as well. It can be, you can create a series of uh, statements and then you can do a lot of uh, good things with respect to stream. You can do sequential stream, you can do parallel streams. So quick recap, let's see, there is a stream class. There is a method stream.off and you can create, uh, for example, let's see, I'm going to create a stream of uh, 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 6 7 8 9 comma 10 let's see and then after that i just want to uh, filter it out i simply say that filter i'm going to create one variable e passing it to lambda expression and i simply write if uh, e that is let's see um modulus 2 which is equal to equal to 0 in that case i simply write one for each loop uh, for each method, I simply say that then you just try to uh, print with system.outerprintln. So I simply write system.outerprintln over here like this. Oops, I have to print E over here. So let's run it again. So you can see that okay, it's printing only the even number between 1 to 10. So you don't need to write a typical for loop or while loop. You don't need to write one if else condition, something like this. This is a stream of uh, uh, integer values I have created. Simple write filter. And then this is the E variable. No need to define the data type over here. E will be passing it to this particular condition. It will filter it out on the basis of this condition. If a number is totally divided by uh, two, that means it's an uh, even number. And then I'm applying the for each, passing this particular E to system dot out or print to print it over here. And that's it. You can simply use it over here like this. Another example, there are a lot of examples, guys, you can do that. For example, let's say I simply write a stream uh, dot off let's say i'm going to create a, a stream of uh, strings over here so i simply write let's see hello comma uh, java 
and then I simple write that okay let's see in the next line I simple write dot map map with what let's say I'm going to create one e lambda variable and I simple write that uh, you simple append e with with a space world over here okay space dot world and then I simple write a for each I simple write system and you can write a method expression also you can simple write print ln that's it and then if you run it and then see the output the output is like that hello world and java world it means hello will be appended with world and then java will be appended with world and then we are printing with the help of for each so you don't need to write any le uh, loop over here or for each or for or while loop it will simple with a series of statements you can write it a typical way of a functional programming that we do in uh, scala or any functional programming or kotlin we can do that <coughs> so this is a, another feature which is introduced in actually jdk 1.8 then in jdk 1.8 guys uh, it got added with the optional class which is very, like very important class and i'll tell you so what do you mean by optional class so i simply write let's see optional feature in optional class for example especially to omit uh, to avoid a null pointer exception and that is like amazingly good what exactly they have done let's see for example i'm going to create one string array variable which is equal to new uh, uh, string and uh, let's see around four variables or maybe five length i'm going to take it and then what i'm going to do that i simple write that uh, one class is available that is optional dot okay or before that let's see if you try to print something like this system dot outer print ln i simple write that give me s2 dot what is the length of this particular s2 right now s2 we have not defined this is just an array variable array variable of a string that we have created but s2 is not available in that case so if you run this particular program what will happen you are getting null pointer exception because s2 is is not available s2 means it's s2 is null so null dot length will give you null pointer exception so that is the a problem with this particular code now to avoid this particular problem what exactly we can do is we can use the concept of optional class so simple there is a new class they have created optional class object that you have to create let's see this optional class will behave like a container which can contain any kind of object so let's see i'm storing a string over here and then i'm creating one reference let's see is null or whatever is equal to there is a a method that is optional dot of nullable and then i'm going to create that particular variable for s2 let's see right now s2 is null so s2 is contained inside this particular optional object and then i can put one condition over here that if whatever that is null that reference that you have created if it is a present if it is present then only it will give it to you otherwise you can write one else statement over here you can simply write that system dot out of print ln then you can write that value is not available like that okay so what will happen right now is null is having null value so it will not give you null pointer exception it will directly come inside the else and then it will give you value is not available so if you run it you can see value is not available it's not giving you any null pointer now what i'm going to do that okay i'm going to let's see define some value with s2 so i'm going to simple write s2 which is equal to i'm simple writing for example let's see naveen okay naveen i have written it means now s2 is having naveen same as to i'm passing to the option class <clears throat> and then it's checking it is null no it is not null the value is actually available sorry it's the value is available or not so is present method will check if the value is available for that particular object and then it will so this condition will be satisfied it will return true i simple write system dot out dot print ln it will simple say that okay what exactly the value of s2 so i simple write the value of s2 and let's say i'm printing along with the uh, its length so i simple write uh, s2 dot length over here so let's run it and let's see right now the value is available so it's not giving you value is not available it's saying the value is navi and the length is six over here so this is the way guys you can easily handle your null pointer exception and you can avoid you know no need to write so many null checks over here like that okay there's one more method they have given that if you directly uh, write it like this let's see is null there is one more method is null dot if present method you can see it over here 
if present method says okay fine you give me the consumer so i simply write one lambda over here i'm going to create a variable e lambda and i simply write system dot out of print ln and i'm printing the value of e dot length over here okay if the value is available so let's see the value is available right now so it will give you six over here you can see e dot length what is the value of uh, is null is null is equal to naveen because is null having the container with s2 s2 is naveen so the value is available it will say that okay yeah if the value is available it will give it to you otherwise it will not give you anything okay so like this you can simply do that for example let's see if you really want to create one uh, empty container with the optional class so i simply write that as uh, optional dot empty method you can use it and this empty method will give you what it will give you one let's see one option of object so i store let's see inside the optional of a string and then i'm going to create let's see a variable name is uh, uh, nothing like that whatever reference name you can create nothing is equal to this so i have created one um, optional dot empty i'm going to create one optional blank container which does not have anything and then i'm going to use the same condition over here that okay nothing dot uh, if uh, present and then simple write if it is present then you give it to e and then e will supply it to system dot out of print ln and i simple write that uh, e dot or i simple write by over here okay right now in this particular nothing we don't have anything it's an empty container so let's see what exactly it will print so it will give you nothing because the value is not available so this if present method will be executed only and only when the value is available over here so this is like something really good that they have given you can write a check over here if the value is available or not okay so um let's see so this is the feature guys available in jdk 1.8 then let's uh come to jdk 9 what happened in jdk 9 so for jdk 9 they have introduced one concept that is called j shell so j shell they added in jdk 9 actually j shell means that a lot of people were demanding that i want to write the java code directly on just like we do it in a python and javascript directly you can write the code on the command line on the terminal same thing now in java after jshell after jdk9 you can use that so how to do this you simple make sure that okay java underscore home configuration is already done in your laptop uh, in your machine and then you simply write j uh, shell over here okay so j shell you simply write it and then or you write j shell with the i'll tell you one command simple write j shell hyphen hyphen enable preview so that whatever you uh, you the code that you are writing it will be previewed over here so simple write j shell hyphen hyphen enable preview just go to your command line or maybe terminal and then you will enter into j shell over here now you can simple write any code for example let's say i want to write integer x is equal to 10 you can see x equal to 10 i can write it and in the next line if i write system dot out dot print ln I simply write x plus uh, 20 so it will give you 30 over here so directly you can write the code over here for example let's see i want to write any string or any class also if you really want to write it you can simply write it guys and you can create the object of that class and then you can execute the main method everything you can write it over here without any problem so this is the new feature available in uh, jshell if you really want to print any string also so for example let's say i'll just copy and then uh, i simply say that write a program to print hello world okay and then see hello world is getting printed on the console this is exactly same thing that we do it in um, in python and in uh, in javascript also now same thing you can do with uh, java as well just simple use j shell so j shell will come along with jdk 1.9 so if you are already having jdk 14 you don't need to install jdk 1.9 because jdk from jdk 9 actually it got started so by default you will be getting in your jdk a 9 plus versions also like 13 14 or 15 as well okay so i'm using 15 right now in my system so I'm, i got j shell as well you can directly execute your code write your code and execute directly from here okay so this is the thing guys that are added in jdk 9 
uh, streams got added from JDK 8. So remember this thing that people might ask you at a time of interview. This is JDK 8 feature optional also available in uh, JDK 8 and then JShell available in JDK 9. Then in JDK 9, actually one more thing added that is called uh, factory methods for immutable collections. Factory methods for immutable uh, collections. So let's see how exactly we can do that. For example, let's see um, um, earlier what we used to do that. Uh, if you really want to create, this is factory, not this one. Earlier, what exactly we used to do that, if you really want to create one, uh, let's see, array list. So I simply write arrays dot as list method is there. And you can simply write one comma, two comma, three comma, four comma, five, six like that. So this arrays dot as list will give you what? One list of a string because we have, sorry, list of integer because we have added integers over here. So I simply write list of integer. And uh, let's see, this is my list that I have created, right? And uh, this list that we have to import, first of all, array list and java.util, we have to import this list, we have to import. And then this is a typical way of that we were already using it. Now, what exactly they have done that uh, it is very much simplified. What you can do is that uh, you can use list dot off method, you can simply use it and you can simply create, so if you see this off method, which is directly available over here, press control space, you can see off of any object, you can create that. So for example, let's see, I really want to create a list of some strings. So I simply write, let's see, Java, then I'm going to write Python, and then I'm going to write, let's see, Ruby, and then I'm going to write JavaScript, let's see, JS. So this will... Uh, a list will be created and list of will give you what list of a string now because a uh, list of a string means because this list is having a string over here so let's see I simply write a language list is equal to this and this will contain the string types so like this also you can do that if you really want to iterate now the typical uh, streams also you can use that to iterate so I simply write let's see lang dot stream dot uh, for each write one element e over here and pass it to system dot out print ln just to print the value of e so let's see what will happen if you run it you can see that java python ruby javascript getting printed on the console okay so this is again a new feature factory method directly available list dot off method is directly available you can create the list with this instead of writing like this you can still use that but directly you can use it over here Okay, and it will be the immutable collections. Okay, then uh, one more interesting thing that uh, <clears throat> if you remember before JDK, sorry, before JDK 10 or in JDK 8, if you have worked with, whenever I declare a variable, for example, let's say I'm going to declare a variable, one integer variable, so I have to write. So this actually feature got added in JDK 10. I'll tell you what exactly the feature is all about. So if I'm writing, let's say integer x is equal to 10. So here integer is compulsory to write, right? In the next line, if I'm writing a string, uh, y is equal to, I'm writing, let's see, hello. Then here you have to give the data type over here. And you have to explicitly, you have to give that, okay, what type of data that you are storing, integer type of data or a string type of data, like that. So now they have removed the strict data type concept. I mean, they have introduced one, not they have removed the concept, but they have introduced one keyword that is called where keyword. A new where keyword which allows to omit the type of a variable. It means you can you don't need to write the type of the variable. You can use it for any object. You can use it for any variable. For example, if I'm writing let's see variable x is equal to 10. So Java compiler will automatically read that okay, yeah, this is an integer value, so this will behave like an integer only. So if you write let's see system dot out of print ln x plus uh, 10. So 10 plus 10, 10 be 20 will be printed on the console directly. But at the same time, if you're making this 10 with the double quotes as a string variable, now this automatically will be uh, treated as a string variable. And then if you write uh, x plus 10, it will become 1, 0, 1, 0, because now that concatenation will happen like that. If you really want to create one hash set or one array list, for example, let's say I want to create one variable 
um, edge which is equal to pointing to one hash set so I simply write hash set of a string over here you can write it like this so it will automatically you just need to let me import this hash set the object of hash set will be pointed by referred by edge over here and automatically compiler will see that okay yeah this edge is actually one hash set actually hash set reference over here that we have created and if you really want to use that simple write edge dot add let's see i have added one string which is let's see my name naveen like this and if you really want to uh print you can print it or the rest of the things will remain same guys you can create one array list also so let's create one quick array list so i simple write new uh, new sorry I simply write new array list of a string that also you can create that and let's see this time I'm taking h1 and array list you have to import from java.util package if you really want to add something let's see again I'm adding this time I'm adding h1 dot add a tom you can simple do that okay and if you really want to print let's see system dot auto print ln h1 dot uh, get index as zero because array list is collection based so get zero will give you tom over here okay so here the variable keyword they have introduced so this is where keyword they have introduced over here it's not variable but it's where keyword so this is a new feature available in jdk 10 then uh, JDK 11, they have introduced one more concept that is called a single source file launch. That maybe I can prepare a separate video for that. And uh, that I'll tell you in a separate video. But let's move to the JDK 12 directly. Then they have introduced the new switch case expression in JDK 12. So I simply write a new uh, switch case in JDK 12. What exactly they have done? So earlier, what exactly we used to do that? Okay, we have to create a switch case like that. Uh, not like this. Let me just quickly write switch and then you can write a switch case a statement like this. You can pass any key and the value you can write it. For example, if I'm writing a string browser is equal to Chrome. <clears throat> and then your key will be browser. And the value is different cases browser wise you can uh, create that. So let's say this is a case for browser Chrome and then for different uh, browsers you can create it. For example, Firefox, this is Internet Explorer. So that was a typical way of creating a switch case statement. Now what exactly they have done? They have introduced a new switch case uh, expression. So let's see. So this is the old one. Now the we will see the new switch case. Okay, the new one. The new one says that uh, you simple let's see for example I'm going to create a variable variable um, let's see um, n which is equal to 3 and then what I'm going to do that I simple write variable uh, m which is equal to I'm going to write a switch over here and then this switch n will become my key over here and then you can start the switch statement starting body and ending body like this and then you can create multiple cases so let's see my case number one and then you can put a lambda over here and let's see case number one I simple write if case number one I simple write one over here okay so likewise I can create multiple cases case number one case number two case number three and case number four like this so I simple create let's see multiple cases case number two sorry case number two then this is case number three and this is case number four and I simply write, let's see, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. And then you have to put a semicolon here. That's it. And then add a default case. Sorry, yeah. We have to add a default case also. If a default, I simply write either throw illegal exception or if you don't want to write all these illegal expressions and everything, you simple, uh, simple say that uh, whatever, let's see, a number not found like this that's it and then if you really want to print 
what will happen okay so n equal to 3 so what is the value of m now so n equal to 3 n equal to 3 over here it will give you 3 so 3 will be given to m so i'm going to print the value of m now so simple print m and let's see so m is equal to 3 is getting printed on the console so this is much simplified a uh, switch case guys that they have given like that okay so this is the new feature got added in jdk 12 with the new switch case then um one more thing in jdk 13 yes in jdk 13 they have uh, started multi-line string support this is something very good multi-line string means let's see there is a json file json will be a string and uh, kind of uh, number of lines available there is an xml string is available or multiple paragraphs that you want to write so you don't need to create one we used to do what we used to write one escape character like that one single slash character we have to write it to escape the double quotes or single quotes now you don't need to do that what exactly you simply create a variable let's see for example variable test variable i'm going to create or let's see variable response variable that i'm going to create and i simply write three carefully three double quotes one two three like this and then you can start a bracket over here sorry not like this okay and then after this bracket the closing bracket you have to write dot one two and three and then colon okay there are three double quotes and then you have to give a value for example let's say i'm going to give a value something like this that is uh, uh, not like this you can simple create let's see i'm going to create a, a json over here name name is equal to let's see tom and put a comma and let's say simple write that is age colon let's see i'm writing uh, age is a 20 and then again comma and then I'm going to write let's see a uh, place and I simply write place which is uh, let's see LA so this is a string that you can uh, simply create you can simply write it like this starting with three double quotes and end it with three double quotes and this is a complete JSON that I want to write so I don't need to write any uh, escape character or something like this so what you do simple I'm just going to print System dot auto print and print the value of a response over here and let's uh, run it. So here you will see that okay the exact JSON string getting printed on the console. This is something amazing feature available in JDK 13 introduced that is called multi line string feature available. So after this in JDK 14 guys they have added data classes they have introduced one record keyword over there. And this is something very very important and uh, data classes in Java. So data classes means the classes are declared with the record keyword and uh, having automatic uh, automatic getter and setter auto uh, constructors will be created and then equals method also will be there you don't need to create the complete class over there you can get rid of a complete chunk of a boilerplate uh, code for example let's say i'm going to create a new class so i'm going to create a let's say new uh, employee class okay and uh, this employee class i'm just going to create let's see click on finish right you remove public from here first of all and you simple write that uh, class also you can remove simple write record keyword employee and uh, here you have to give the syntax like this that whatever variable class variable will be introduced so every employee will have name and integer age like this and that's it so you don't need to create the complete class over here so string name integer age and let's see i'm going to write a string uh, place over here string place that's it so this is a class will be created with the record keyword and will be automatically the constructor and the getter and setter everything will be created over here so I, I really want to use that i'm going to create the object of this class in this particular class where the main method is available so see this so this is i'm going to use jdk uh, 14 feature over here i'm going to create the object of employee class simple write let's see employee even is equal to a new employee the moment you write new employee you can see that you can pass name age and place although you must be confusing that now where is the constructor the constructor is available over here automatically that i mean automatically the parameterized constructor will be created 
you don't need to write it explicitly over here so let's see for example i have simple write name name of the employee is uh, let's see peter age is let's see i'm writing 24 and the place i'm writing let's see uh, san francisco that's it. This is the object that I have created. Now I really want to use, let's say, system dot order print and I want to print their value. So see this even dot name, you will get it. And I want to print system dot order print and I simply write even dot age, and then you run it. So here you will get Peter and twenty four. This is super awesome, right? That you don't need to write any getter, you don't need to write any constructor, you don't need to write any equals method as well. You can simply reuse it directly like this. That's it. Okay, now one more thing in JDK 14 that they have added that is in JDK 14 once again there is a new enhancement of instance of keyword. You must have seen for example let's say I'm going to create one a new string, a uh, new string where I'm going to simple write let's see a uh, string uh, Naveen over here right and I'm going to store let's say in this particular object which is ob is equal to this okay and then what i want i put one if condition i simply write if ob is the instance of so we used to write this particular keyword ob is the instance of uh, a string then do what then i'm going to write system dot outer print ln so i really want to print the string length so if you really want to print the string length and you used to write it like this ob dot ob dot length see there is no uh, method is available because i cannot write dot length directly over here so what exactly i have to do i have to typecast this particular ob into a string first of all so i have to typecast like this into a string and then put a bracket over here and then i have to use a dot a length method i have to use it means now the length of naveen will be given to you so if you are running it it's giving you six over here but this you don't need to typecast in JDK 14 what exactly they have given exact same code let's say I'm creating one more OB1 over here and then you can simply write let's see my uh, str and the same my str you can use it for dot length you don't need to typecast explicitly simple write my str dot length and that's it so now let's see my str dot length will give you oops we are getting one error one second uh, one extra packet okay so let's run it again and let's see so here it will give you six so you can create directly a variable over here a reference of a string and then this particular uh, no need to do a typecast over here like this you can directly use this particular variable to get the length or any kind of a string operation you can simply use it so this is a new feature that is uh, instance of without casting you can uh, do that okay so guys uh, these are the things one more thing that in jdk 15 they have added although i cannot show you in eclipse because in, in eclipse supporting till jdk 14 only they have given that is a sealed classes okay this is something very important there is a sealed keyword they have actually uh, introduced sealed a keyword you can restrict which class can extend or implement a particular class or interface okay so for example let's I'll, I'll directly show you in jshell so i'll go to my term shell enable preview yeah so now see it carefully i'm going to create a sealed interface and my interface name for example let's say i'm going to write my interface name is a bank interface and which permits only let's see hsbc bank I simply write HSBC a bank comma ICICI bank these are the two classes are available okay and uh, then we have uh, the body I'm going to write this is uh, string uh, get name this method in interface we cannot have the method body so let's see this is one interface that i have created public with sealed keyword which will permit only hsbc bank and icc bank now i'm going to create a class over here see this carefully i'm going to create public this will be let's see a final class public final a class hsbc bank i simply write implements my interface name is bank over here and then we have to override that method so i simply write a string get name this is the class responsibility to override 
and I simple write for example let's say I simple say that uh, uh, return HSBC and then uh, ending bracket and then ending bracket for class cannot implement get name in bank attempt to assign weaker access privilege was public string okay so let's uh, okay I have to make it public okay modified and then uh, let's make it public as well once again. okay so this is the class which is implementing bank interface okay so this is a class got created guys like that same way I can uh, create one more class over here for example let's see public final class and the class name is ICC bank class okay ICC bank class that I have created which is actually implements uh, implements uh, sorry not this one implements bank interface and then again I'm going to write public uh, string uh, get name method I'm going to overwrite and this will return I say ICI closing bracket and this is the closing bracket for that so you can see created class for ICC bank perfect so you can simply do that it means only HSBC bank and ICC bank is permitted to create uh, to implement this bank interface now I'm going to create one more class for example let's see public a final class and the class name is let's see HS uh, SDFC which is a new which is a different bank which is going to implement a bank interface and then I'm going to create a, a method over here and I simple write let's see public a string get name method I'm going to overwrite and I simple write return FDFC closing bracket for method and closing bracket for class it will give you error see this class is not allowed to extend sealed class which is a bank interface this class is not allowed to do that okay so that is the purpose of the seal now it is sealed this interface is sealed with HSBC Bank and ICC Bank only can implement that so this is a new feature that actually got introduced okay in JDK 15 I cannot show you in Eclipse guys I am really sorry that I'm showing you in JShell but exactly same code you can write it over here but my Eclipse is actually supporting till JDK 14 only so I have to configure with JDK 15 that's why I'm not not able to show you okay so this is the thing guys that you can simply do that so these are the features that are available from JDK 8 to JDK 15 that I have already shown um, what are the important features are available I'm just going to sh I have just only shown you those things I hope it is clear now and uh, let me know if you are facing any issue with respect to all these index. I'll do one thing I'll just upload this code in my git repository you can refer directly from there and please practice with uh, all these new features people might ask you at a time of interview what are the new features are available so these are the list of new features important new features in JDK from JDK 8 to JDK 15 thank you so much guys thanks for watching this particular video please subscribe to the channel if you're learning something from this video and let me know if you have any issues till then take care and god bless you all